Um, I'm actually here. I'm in Flammable Matt's basement. I live here. He, he supports uh, many scientists, including myself. What's going on, smart people? Shut up, Andrew. I'm definitely going to eat them because that's the only food I was given this week. A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. So a while back I was uh, looking over my Twitter feed and there I noticed that my boy David Berardo, it's a Canadian boy, okay, one of the boys who drinks milk <laughs> out of a bag, um, posted a very interesting tweet, namely that he was able to measure the speed of light roughly using chocolate and this is exactly what we are going to do today. And for this special occasion I actually brought the man himself, David Berardo, with me. What's up David? Yo, what's up everybody? My name is David, I'm a grad student at MIT studying astrophysics. My specialty is exoplanets, which you've probably heard about, but that's not what I'm here to talk to you today. Um, I'm here because Jens emailed me and was like, David, help, I need a real physicist, help me measure the speed of light, I just I just do math, I don't know how to you know measure something. So uh, yeah, I agreed to come and help out. So we're gonna go pop in the microwave, uh, see if we can measure the speed of light and show you guys how you can do it for yourself. I'm also on Twitter at Central Potential, I post cool math and science type GIFs. Um, and I also post memes and you know, stuff like that. It's good fun. I've also got a YouTube channel, which is kind of empty right now, but I'm gonna put stuff on it soon, so you can go follow me there as well. But anyways, uh, let's go Let's go measure the speed of light. But before we get into the main video, don't forget to check out stemrich.com, your source for all things STEM, including this very good looking LED levitation globe. You were staring at it the whole time, am I right? Yeah, you can get it over there. Link in the description. So before we can start with the experiment in itself, we need two main ingredients apart from using a microwave, which I have down here, and a bar of chocolate. Namely, we need some measurements. Those measurements are actually really easy to take. On the one hand, we need the distance between two anti-nodes of a wave, what this is about, more information in a second, but also we need the frequency of our microwave. So you might ask yourself what the frequency is, here's an easy example. If I take for example this double pendulum right here, it can do a full rotation. Now this full rotation takes a certain amount of time and the time it takes to do this one rotation is basically the reciprocal of our frequency. Meaning the frequency in itself is just one rotation divided by the time it takes to do this rotation. Meaning unit wise it's going to be one divided by seconds. And this one divided by seconds can also be interpreted as the hertz. This is another unit for the frequency. And we can actually read off really easily what the hertz of, for example, our microwave that we are using is. Um, I got the same microwave here that my boys David and also Andrew are using down there at the basement. And this microwave has a frequency of 2450 hertz. For fuck's sake, this is really heavy. Now you might notice why we needed this exact measurement of the hertz. Because if you want to find out what, for example, a velocity is, okay, the speed of light, we need to divide the meters per second or kilometers per hour, etc. Meaning if we were to find out the distance between the anti-nodes and divide it basically by second, so multiplying it with our frequency, we are going to get approximately our speed of light out. Because the, the stuff that we are using in here are just electromagnetic waves, the waves we are using in a microwave, and well, light is also an electromagnetic wave. And speaking of which, I got something with me. This right here is just a rope that you can use for jumping. And you can actually simulate the waves that we are using in a microwave quite nicely using this rope right here. Especially what the wave is going to look like. The waves we are using in a microwave are called standing waves. Imagine those waves being tucked to either sides of the walls inside there. And then they can just swing in there basically. Okay, but we can do better than that and I'm going to demonstrate this to you now. What's going on, smart people? Um, Andrew, could you hold this for me, please? Now, Andrew is holding a string. So do I. And meaning, this is basically just a simulation of the standing wave. It's tucked to both sides of a wall. And now, when I start swinging, you might notice that we are tracing out a certain pattern. It looks like a sine wave. Here, you notice, it's a wave. But the most important thing here is the fact that if I start swinging, rotating the string, I'm going to put energy from my arm into the string. Meaning overall, the string is also going to have some internal energy saved in there, you could say. Now what I just said can be crafted quite nicely on a chalkboard and here's just some kind of terminology. What we call the points with the lowest energy are the nodes. Those are 
the ones basically on the x-axis you could say. But then there are also points where the energy is really high. Imagine it like putting your arm right inside of the string and if you put your arm into here it really doesn't hurt because this part is really not swinging too much. It's basically standing still at the node. But if you put your arm here and the string is going to hit you, then for example if you have a wire it's going to hurt really badly. Meaning a lot of energy is put into this part of the string. And those points with the highest energy are called the anti-nodes. Those are like the extremums of our function that we're having here. And now with those high energy points, it's just the case that you can actually see them when putting chocolate into a microwave. Namely, those are the points where, where your chocolate is going to melt pretty badly. Here at the nodes, nothing is really going to happen. I mean, it's, it's going to melt a tiny little bit due to, uh, due to the heat, which is going to be transferred to this point from the high energy points. But other than that, those anti-nodes are going to be the points where you see the chocolate melting the most. And just one little side note, for this experiment to really work out, we need to remove the plate of our microwave because the plate of the microwave is rotating all the time in there. This just has the purpose that our heat, our high energy spots, our anti-nodes are going to distribute it very nicely and evenly all over your food. But once we remove our plate, our chocolate is going to stand still inside of our microwave, meaning the anti-nodes are going to hit those very spots all the time, meaning we are going to see an extensive melting and heating up of those very spots at the anti nodes. Now I'm going to give everything to David and I hope you are going to enjoy his part in the kitchen. Don't dare my basement. <laughs> Alright, yeah, so here we are in the kitchen, time to measure the speed of light using a microwave and some chocolate. Um, I'm actually here, I'm in Clownville Mass basement, I live here. He, he supports uh, many scientists, including myself. What's going on, smart people? Shut up, Andrew! Um, yeah, so um, we're going to measure the speed of light using some chocolate. You want something that's you know wide and flat so that you can have a big area to work with. Um, you also, the first thing you want to do is take out the plate that spins. So this is good for food but bad for science because this will spin your food around, make sure it gets evenly heated, but that's not what we want. So as uh, you just saw, you want the same part of the chocolate to get heated up. Um, so that you can measure exactly where the hotspots are and figure out the wavelength and the speed of light. Now we're going to take out the spinning plate so that the chocolate is removed. We've got our chocolate on a plate, put it in the microwave. Alright, so now we've got our chocolate in there. And I've actually got it standing on a little thing because there's a little piece that spins, so you don't want that. So no spinning chocolate this time. Um, let's pop it in for precisely pi minutes. And that might be too long, but we'll just see what happens. We'll check in. All right, so that's pi minutes. Let's see what we've got. Ooh, yeah, there you go. So you may end up burning the chocolate. That's all right, I'm trying to stop the smoke alarm. But let's take this out and see what we got. All right, so we've got our first measurement. So we burned the chocolate, that's okay, that happens sometimes. Um, but what's important is that it burned in these two spots. And these spots are showing us where the antinodes of the wavelength are. So. Recall that those are the points where the, that's the peak of the energy of the photons, basically. And so we can see how far the two peaks are. So I'm going to go grab a ruler and then we'll measure this. Okay, so now we have a second good measurement. I actually didn't burn the chocolate this time, so that's good. So I got another one going behind me. We're going to do a few more and then get the speed of light at the end by averaging all these measurements together. Okay, so we've got our four measurements, and uh, if you're following along at home, you can, you know, go ahead and eat these after you've measured the distance between the hotspots. I'm definitely going to eat them because that's the only food I was given this week. So now I'm going to go run the numbers and see what we get and how close we get to the actual speed of light, which is around 300,000 kilometers a second. That's the measured value by scientists, but we're going to get our own value um, and see how close we got with our chocolate bar microwave home experiment. Okay, so now we're done with the data collection and we can start doing some data analysis to figure out the speed of light. So we have our four trials and for each of these trials, what we can do is measure the distance between the two hotspots. And remember that the hotspots where there was a lot of energy, those are the antinodes of the wave. So the distance between them is half the wavelength, so if we multiply that distance by two, we'll get the full wavelength. And what we're going to do is average together our four measurements so that we can reduce some of the uncertainty and get a bit more of a precise... We're using chocolate in the microwave, but we'll get we'll see how close we get to the actual answer. 
So what I'm going to do actually is uh, do some quick live Python analysis. So the first thing is get the average wavelength. So here I'm adding up the four values and then dividing by four. Um, and I've gone through and measured them. And so what we find there is that we get 11.45 centimeters. So units are very important. So if we want to get, say, kilometers per second, we'll have to divide this by 10,000 or 100,000. Sorry. So now we have this many kilometers is the distance between them. Obviously, it's a tiny number. OK, the other thing we need is the frequency because wavelength is frequency times uh, sp sorry, speed of light is wavelength times frequency. So the frequency that you just measure off the microwave and it's 2450 megahertz and mega is the prefix for a million. So if we multiply this by one million, that's our frequency in hertz or inverse seconds. So now if we do the average wavelength times the frequency, we get 280,525 kilometers per second for our speed of light. And if you look up the actual value, the actual value is around 297,100 um, kilometers. So we're actually pretty close. Um, that's pretty good. So if we take the actual value of the speed of light, which is around 299,000, um, we can see how close we got. So if we do our measured value divided by the real value, 0.93. So we got 93% of the actual speed of light, which if you ask me is pretty good considering all we used was some chocolate and a microwave. Um, so that's pretty cool. And I hope you know you guys can follow along uh, at home. You can do this yourselves. Maybe uh, comment in the chat. Let us know what value you got. But yeah, that's speed of light using chocolate in a microwave. I gotta admit the measurements that we got are actually quite accurate. I mean, if we just have a 7% error of our speed of light, considering how big the speed of light actually is, it's, it's, it's really not too bad. You can use this value to actually already calculate the time it takes for, for light to travel from here to the moon, for example, because the error is going to be even less for this small distance. So it's actually quite good if you ask me. But before we actually end the video, I would like to thank today's sponsor Brilliant for sponsoring yet another video here on this channel. If you're not familiar with our recurring sponsor Brilliant yet, then I'm going to give you a short and spicy introduction. Brilliant is an online learning platform and app which has nearly 70 interactive courses in their repertoire by now. It really doesn't matter what you want to learn. Everything STEM related you can find over there. Chemistry, mathematics and also physics, the stuff we have done today, electromagnetics basically, can be found over in Brilliant. And what I like about Brilliant the most is the fact that their concept is really minimalistic but highly effective. So it works as follows. If you want to learn something about electromagnetics, for example, you are going to grab yourself the electromagnetics course, then you are going to start off with a nice and easy introduction to the topic. And, uh, exercises are going to get harder and harder over time. And the exercises are really remarkable in my opinion because you are going to learn by doing. With their interactive courses you are going to track sliders around, take a look at interactive graphs, 3D graphs you can um, pull around and track around a bit. You can also program in Python in their courses. And overall you are going to go through a lot of exercises, you are going to answer some questions and if you don't know the answer to a question you can just take a look at a very well thought out explanation step that Brilliant is going to deliver to you. Also, I covered a lot of their courses already on my live streams, so make sure to check them out. They're really worth it. It's always a lot of fun to go through those courses with you, my subscribers, all the time. So it's really a lot of fun. So if this feels like it's something for you, if you think that you could benefit from what Brilliant can offer to you, then make sure to check out the link at the top of the description. With it, you can basically access Brilliant for free, already a big portion, and the first 20 people to actually actually use the link get 20% off an annual premium subscription. And trust me on this one, it's going to make for a very nice Christmas present. I know a bunch of people who actually got Brilliant gifted to them last year round and they are highly satisfied with what Brilliant offered them. So make sure to check it out and now I'm going to do a little outro because don't forget to take a look at the Twitter and also the outtakes and YouTube channel of David Berardo's stuff. He does a bunch of things and I also follow him on Twitter and, and he's really a nice fellow even though he's, he's Canadian but he's doing some good stuff. I think John Lajoie was also Canadian so, so I think he, he passes the test as being a good person. So yeah, don't forget to follow <laughs> my boy David Berardo. Okay, he needs some food down there in, in, in his basement. Okay, gotta um, get some food for him, some, some dust. Um, other than that, don't forget to check out Stemage 2 and to subscribe to this channel. And I hope you did enjoy this um, 
kind of new format, haven't done something like this before. Experimental physics, yikes. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun to do this. And up until the next video, I wish you guys a flamble day. Ciao.